Hi there and welcome to another Bug Bites video. In this video we're going to revisit the registration form that we built in the very first tutorial of this series and we're going to use that to implement some HTMX trigger filters. Now we're going to see what trigger filters are and the reason we're going to do this is inspired by a comment that I received from Darren here. It said, can HTMX be tweaked for example, to only make the post request if the username is longer than three characters. So the way it works at the moment, we have this registration form and when the user types in, a new request is sent every time there's a key up event. So basically every time the user types a character. And you can see this on the terminal here. We have post requests being sent to the check username endpoint. Now what we want to do is we want to avoid sending this post request if the username has three characters or less. So we're going to use trigger filters to do this. So let's start by reminding ourselves what is a trigger in HTMX. Um, if we go back to the original form here, we have this render field here and it uses these HTMX attributes. It sends a post request to the check username URL and the HX trigger is sent on the key up. Now the trigger is essentially the event that triggers the AJAX request that HTMX will send. So the trigger in this case is the key up event within our input. So every time we add another character, every time we press a key, that event is triggered and it's going to send another request to the server. Now in a second, we're going to learn how to modify that to only send a request if we have more than three characters in the username. But first of all, let's cross to the documentation for HX trigger. And as we mentioned, it's the attribute that allows you to specify what triggers the AJAX request. Now you can see there's a section for event filters and the filters are actually defined within square brackets after the name of the event. So there's the name of the event, which could be click or it could be key up or any other event. And as it says here, after the event name, you can enclose a Boolean JavaScript expression in square brackets. And you can see in the examples, this click um, will only trigger in this case if the control key is pressed um, while you're clicking the element. And below that, you see we're calling a function in JavaScript that's defined globally. And you can also use Boolean operators like the AND operator and OR operators to filter down this expression. Now the expression within the square brackets should evaluate to true or false. And if it evaluates to true, the trigger will fire and the request will be sent to the back end. And otherwise, if it's false, it will not trigger the AJAX request. So in a minute, we're going to modify our key up event here. And we're only going to send the request if the username field has more than three characters at that time. So first of all, let's amend this to make it the same as the documentation. I'm going to copy the click and the control key within the square brackets here. And we'll paste that into our trigger. And now what's going to happen is it's only going to trigger the AJAX request when I actually click the input field, but I need to be holding the control key on the keyboard at the same time. The control key needs to be pressed, otherwise this will not happen because this will evaluate to false. So if I go back to the front end here and we'll refresh this, now you can see we're not getting the request sent at all because the control key part of this expression does not evaluate to true. But if I press control key and then click this, you see that it actually triggers the request. Now the reason that this works, this control key statement here, um, this is actually a property of the event, event.controlkey, and it's either true or false. And in general, all symbols in the expression that you use in the square brackets, they are resolved firstly against the triggering event, so the normal DOM event, and then next they'll be looked for in the global namespace. And we're going to see an example of that as well later in this video. So basically, if you call my event with the foo statement within square brackets, HTMX will firstly look for a property named foo on the event. And if it doesn't find one, it will then look in the global namespace. So with that, let's now implement our check to make sure the username field has more than three characters. So let's go back to VS code and I'm gonna change this back to the key up event. Now we know from the documentation that anything in the square brackets is first evaluated on the event object. Um, so what we're going to do is event objects have a property called target, which gives you access to the element that triggered the event essentially. And from there you can get the value of that element. So the target.value is basically equal to whatever is typed into the field at a given time. So if I type FDA, then the event object will have a target, which will be equal to the input element. 
and the value of that input element will be FDA at the current moment. So now we, we should have access through that property, the event.target.value, we should have access to what's typed into the field. And because that's a string, we can use the JavaScript.length property and we can check if that is greater than three. And if it's greater than three, then in that case, that will evaluate to true and the trigger will actually fire the request. Otherwise, if the username is three characters or less, it is not going to evaluate true, so the request will not be sent. So let's see if this works. I'll save that, go back to the front end and refresh the page. So now we see if we type into this field, when we type one character, we're not getting the feedback. It's not sending the request to the back end. Same with two characters, same with three characters. And now we should have this statement. If we type one more character, then this statement should evaluate to false. This one here, the target.values length will be more than three and we should see the feedback under there because this, the request is now being sent. So that's how you implement that check here and that's what a trigger filter does. It defines whether or not you should actually trigger the request based on a condition that's specified within square brackets after the event name. Now there's one final thing I would like to show in this video. If we go back to HTMX, we have the statement down here that if it's not found on the event if whatever you put in the square brackets isn't found on the event then it will look in the global namespace for that particular identifier so we're going to build a function within a script tag so let's go back to our template and at the bottom we're going to define a javascript block and let me end that and in here we can do any valid javascript and what i'm going to do is define a javascript function and we'll call it send request and this function is going to have one argument it's going to be the the, the actual value of the input field, which we'll call value. Within the body, we're just going to return a simple Boolean that will evaluate to true or false. And what I want to do is I want to return true if the value starts with M. So starts with M. That will basically return true if whatever the value is begins with the letter M in capitals. Otherwise, it will return false. So this function is now in our global namespace. So I'm going to copy the name of that function. And what we can do is we can reference that within our trigger filter, which is within the square brackets here. So let me get rid of the target.value stuff. I'm going to paste the name of that function. It's called send request. And this function takes a single argument, remember? It was the value. And we want to pass in the value of whatever has been typed into the input element in the front end. So let's see how to grab that now. If we go back to the trigger filter, and within the brackets, we can reference the target.value as before, because of course this is an event. So it has the target attribute and that in turn has the value attribute. So we're passing that value to the function that we defined and that function will return true if the value starts with M. So let's save that and go back to the front end. If I refresh this page, we should now see that nothing happens if we type random letters, but if we type like a capital N, nothing happens. If we type a capital M, we get that evaluating to true because the value starts with M. M. So we have created a very simple JavaScript function and we are using that to return true or false and trigger our event conditionally. And let's say we wanted to trigger the request if it starts with M or S or any other letter. We can make this function as complicated as we want other than just value.starts with M. We can also say or value.starts with S and that's the syntax there for an or expression in JavaScript. Value.starts with and we'll pass a capital S to that. So now if we go back and refresh, if we type N, nothing happens. If we type M, we get the request being sent. And if we refresh that again and we type S, we see that it's also sent for S, but it's not sent for other letters that we type in. It has to start with M or S, and that's because of the function that we've created here. So that's how you can reference functions within your trigger filters, and that covers everything that I wanted to show in this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're on Twitter, please follow on Twitter. I'm trying at the moment to become more active on Twitter. The code will also be available on GitHub and we'll see you in the next video.